Hey, I'm Cameron Yates, and on this episode of Remodeling America, I'm going to walk you through a couple of materials that we like to use that far exceed most of the standard materials for roofing. So if you want a roof that doesn't leak, stay tuned. talk to you about some of the materials that we use. I think it's extremely important in all projects to make sure you can use the best materials that you can afford or your client can afford. So for us, especially with roofs, especially uh, in North Carolina where you get plenty of hurricanes and lots of rain, it's extremely important to make sure you get all the water from ever coming into the house and the roof is the first place where you need to start. Okay, so I'll walk you through in a couple scenes about, it'll actually walk us through some of the guys about um, how to install and I'll show you that, but I want to talk about some of the materials first. So um, we'll actually go with uh, in the order of operations here. So we we'll grab this one. All right. So this is a product by Grace and it's their ice and water shield. They're basically the first ones to come up with the AI product, I think. Uh, you know, originally they, they always claim that they're original, so we'll just go with that. But we've used plenty of ice and waters, uh, different granule ones, peel and stick ones with the granules on top, and they just they just don't work for me. That they don't I don't feel like they seal enough. They're extremely slick when people are walking on them. They they break extremely easily. So I like this product a lot because it's the same consistency of like a window wrap of a peel and stick. It's significantly more expensive. I think you pick this up for about $150 for about 200 20, 210 square feet, so you have almost a buck a square foot. It's about double the price. I'd say it's double to triple the price of some ice and waters, but in my mind, it's completely worth it. I'll show you kind of how it looks when it rolls out, but it's a lot grippier on there. It's self-sealing, so when you throw a nail through it, it's just way better to work with. Um, it bends easier. It doesn't break. I would advise everybody to buy this product. I, it's definitely the best one I've ever used. So here's a section of the ice and water, the grace ice and water that we use. It's just a little section that we peeled off and threw down here. But um, you can kind of see there's a paper backing on it. And when it peels off, this stuff is extremely sticky, especially to itself. You can see how some of it's already stuck to itself down here and there's no possible way. Oh, God. And you see how how much. Let me actually take a nail and push it through this stuff so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So. When you nail this stuff, it's actually self-sealing. So if you can see how all that black just kind of pulls around the nail. So it seals that whole edge so no, uh, no moisture can come in. I can't even take the thing out. So that's what we really like about this. God, it's sticking my fingers. So, especially when you see like a nail coming through, it's like completely coated and all of that. So that's how it gives it that self-sealing feature that I really like about it. Plus, with the other asphaltic stuff, I mean, it would have just already just come up into pieces. The stuff, even though it is really sticky, it can be a little hard to work with as soon as you get it, if you figure it out, it's not that bad. But it's just so much more durable. I mean, stuff's awesome. So that's why, that's why we like using this. It's fun to play with. <laughs> so this is one of the first things we put on. It goes around the eaves um, and the, the rakes of all of our projects and in the valleys as well. It's kind of our first step there because it's our last protection against the water. Okay, So that's the ice and water. And then on top of that we put just standard drip edge. It's just aluminum drip edge that you can get pretty much from, from any hardware store. There's nothing terribly special there. But then uh, the next piece that we use is actually this uh, Vicor deck protector. It's also a Grace product and uh, what it's truly meant for, what this is usually meant for and what we use it for is we actually put it on the tops of our joists and bands and decks. It works great for that. It's self-sealing. Stops any water from coming through. It works amazing. It's not meant necessarily to be out in the sunlight, but we actually use this as just a, a backup piece. So this will go on top of our drip edge, up against our. They're actually almost similar products. They actually have a very similar feel to them, and it goes on top of um, just to seal right where the drip edge is attached, and um, right where to seal the nails that are going through. It gives us that little extra protection. So that's another piece that we put on. Love this stuff for both purposes for the decks and for using on roofs. The uh, next thing that we use is just our underlayment. Now we use a synthetic underlayment. I have not touched tar paper, asphalt based tar paper in probably 10 years. Okay, 
way. I've been using the synthetics ever since I, I could imagine. So if you look at this, it's made up of a bunch of different pieces. So it has, it's all woven together and with synthetics and stuff. So you have to really try on the edge, but if you just try to tear the middle, it doesn't tear. But if you were coming and really, okay, well maybe you, I was able to do the second big Okay, so you can, you can just barely tear it, and that's just me pulling as hard as I can. So it's got a grip on both sides, and it rolls out. It has a, a nail pattern to it, so you follow the nail pattern. We use uh, cap staplers on a gun so um, to keep this in them so we're not hand nailing everything. But I love this stuff because it's synthetic. It has a 25-year warranty, um, which is far succeeds even some shingle life. Um, I like this stuff a lot, and... Um, it's a lot more durable, holds up a lot better. Um, it goes on easier. I mean, this is a thousand square feet, and it's and it's extremely light. It can't be more than thirty pounds in this thing. So, I like using any synthetic on them, and it's, it's usually pretty good. But this, uh, it's the Triflex XT. This one's also by, um, I think this is also by Grace. But this is also an awesome product. It's a li it's also more expensive. It's probably about double the price of standard uh, synthetic on laminates, but it. I think it's a 20 or 30 times stronger than 30 pound paper. I mean, it just if you're going to use any under limit, use a synthetic under limit and try to try to get a better one if you can. Okay. Now, also for our, our starters, we don't use them um, starter shingles. Instead, what we use is just the roll of starter shingles. So this is this is a uh, GAF product. We're actually using GAF shingles as well, the Timberline HD. So try to stick with the same company, especially with under with shingles. Okay. If you're going to do shingles, just stick with all the same company. So we use. Um, we use this, and this is a like a peel and stick version of underlayment. So it's got a backer to it, and it's got a sticky edge to that side, and it also has some uh, adhesive, um, dried adhesive on there for when it gets hot. And it kind of sticks to the shingle. So we roll this out. It's 33 feet long, so you don't have any bunch of seams in all your starter shingles. Helps hold it down a lot better as well, and you don't even have to nail it off unless you're on a really steep angle. But normally you don't have to um, nail it down. The stickiness works just fine. So that's what goes on on top of our drip edge, which is on top of our underlayment, and then of course our our, our vicor is on top of the uh, drip edge as well. So that's what goes on right before you start shingling. Um, another product we also use is a ridge vent. We actually use rolled ridge vents. Um, instead of pieces, also so we don't have a bunch of seams in our ridge vent as well, and I'll show you a shot of that uh, later when I get to it. So here's one of the products that we like to use for our ridge vent. So on, on, what I like about this is, it's, is it rolls out all the way, you don't have a bunch of seams all the way across it, and it's just a lot more low profile, plus it's a lot more flexible, so it can bend down easier. This one I think is Lomanco, yeah, Lomanco, and they're a little bit pricier, but it just allows a lot better easier install, uh, better protection from water because you don't have all these um, seams that you normally have with regular ridge vent. Um, there's a couple of companies that make it and, and it's nice. Uh, these these are pretty easy because they also go in with ripping guns which is nice. So these are the ridge vents that we like to use. So these are most of the products that we like to use. If you're going to spend money on some products, definitely try to get the best you can. Hopefully you're not going to re-roof your, your roof for another 20, 30 years, 40 years even. Some of these shingles we have limited lifetime warranties on them. So if there's stuff underneath it is no good, there's no there's no point. So make sure you use the right products, good products, do correct installations. You can find plenty of installation guides through all of these manufacturers or find them on YouTube from reputable guys. So go through those before you start taking on some projects. Make sure you follow the directions on everything. Make sure you look up everything you can. Okay. So. All right. So we're just gonna start right at the top of this um, what they call cupola, as far as I know, and just to kind of give you a little bit of a detail. So for one, make sure you, you don't have a bunch of garbage on your roof like I do right now, so you don't trip and fall on anything. And then also make sure you're always wearing a harness and tied off to the roof, just little notes. Um, apparently nobody cares about me much to let me know my harness uh, has a little flap up on the side, but that's fine. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you wanna, on smaller pieces, you wanna roll it out and kind of cut it to size for what you're going to use just so you don't have this big huge roll that you're working with just kind of on smaller pieces it just makes that most a little bit more sense so this one we kind of rolled out and uh got it pretty much cut to size and then we're gonna peel off the backing and set it in place what's nice about um, this stuff is it has just has a little embedded 
uh, kind of wire that I'll show you here in a second that splits the paper in half in case you want to take two pieces off at once. So if you want to just use, um, take the bottom piece off, set it in place, and then you can take the top piece off and set it. So here what you'll see is I'm pulling off that, uh, they call it ripcord technology, but uh, it basically splits the paper into two. So it just makes it a little bit more manageable. So when you're getting it in place, you want to make sure that <clears throat> you're over your fascia about an inch, inch and a half. It really depends on what kind of drip edge you're using because you want to make sure that the bottom of the drip edge covers up all of the ice and water that you have um, that is going over the fascia. You don't want a bunch of black ice and water just sitting out. And it'll kind of stick up like a sore thumb. So make sure you have it exactly where you want it to because this stuff is really sticky. So you just want to make sure that it's exactly where it's going to be as soon as you put it down. So you don't, as soon as you fold it on top of itself, it is extremely difficult to get it off. So just make sure it's in the right place. So you kind of see me making sure that we've got the correct overlap onto the fascia and just kind of peel it in place. Normally this is not a three man operation, but we were just making sure everybody was on the same page here. So uh, I would definitely recommend at least two people though, uh, uh, to help out with, Kind of stretching it out, making sure it's in place. Maybe one person's peeling off the tape, the paper, the other person's kind of setting it in. But uh, it, two people is, is usually just fine. So you can kind of see he's, uh, he's trying to get it in place so we don't fold it over itself. But it's not really turning out as perfectly as you'd want it to. Now, if you have a couple little ripples in it, it's not the end of the world. So don't worry if you have a couple little ripples. You want it as flat as possible, but. If it has a, a couple little ripples in it, it's not really the end of the world. So on this particular one, since it's a hip style roof, we'll just kind of roll it right over to the other side. Um, what they want is they want a three inch overlap on the same material. So we just roll it onto the other side and we start our ice and water right where that one, three inches overlap where that one ended. This way you can kind of save some material. I'd recommend saving as much as you can and not tossing it like you did because it's about about one, two, maybe two bucks of linear foot. So the stuff is not inexpensive, but it, it is pretty much the best out there. So <clears throat> since we've taken off just the bottom half right now, we're just trying to get it to where the bottom half is, is nice and flat and perfect. So we don't have to worry about the whole piece at, at, at once. So as soon as the bottom is all good, then you can take off the top piece. Another way you can do it is you can you can be rolling it out while you're peeling off the paper at the same time as well. And for longer runs, that works out a lot better. So you want to put this on all your eaves. Uh, and I like to put on the rakes. Not, not everybody does the ones like on the gable roofs. Not everybody does that, but I like to do it. And then after that, you want to put it in, like I was saying, into the, uh, into the valleys. And it just sticks directly to the plywood. Um, which I might add is was done extremely poorly on this job. We actually didn't build this particular uh, particular. We didn't do all of this framing ourselves. We actually uh, came in just doing the re-roof on this one. So don't we'll pay attention to all the framing. That's not me. I don't use OSB for anything because it's trash. All right. So as soon as you have the edges looking pretty good, we would normally go around and do the ice and water on everything first, but just for Example purposes, we're going to go ahead and put uh, just the, the drip edge on top of this one edge to kind of show you. So <clears throat> I was actually thinking about cutting this off and that's when that, I thought it didn't make any sense on here. We're just going to lay the ice and water up to up to that overlap piece plus it saves us a little bit of material. So that's all pretty good. And then you're going to take your drip edge, which is usually a piece of aluminum, just like this one. Uh, I think it's this two and three eighths drip edge and it's just white aluminum. Uh, you should put it on all of your projects, pretty much every edge. On the on the eaves like this, you you want to do it on top of. Uh, you want to put the put it on top of the ice and water if it's folded down, and then the underlayment and everything goes above that. If you're running underlayment, but on the rakes it's usually a little bit different. But you'll just see them on a hip roof here. So different people do the drip edge differently. Uh, I do it this way for speed and I think it, it, it works a little bit better in my opinion. It kind of leaves, when you cut it like that, it kind of leaves a little bit of an opening just right at the right at the top edge. You can always put some, some roofing cement in there if you want to or some silicone if you're afraid that water will get in there. But with the ice and water bent over, it, honestly in the end it doesn't really matter. If it gets under there, it'll hit the ice and water and then come on the face of the fascia. So 
I just do it like that for, for speed, plus it leaves a, a nice finished edge on the face. All right, so here you're going to want to nail it every, I say 10 to 12 inches. Some people have always said not to nail it a lot because it'll kind of crinkle up, but we, we nail ours every 10 or so inches. You want to make sure it looks relatively straight, though. Obviously, it can only be so straight if your fascia is really crooked, but you want to make sure that it's relatively straight before you obviously start nailing it off. So just put an eye down it. Of course, start plugging nails in it, and then you got to rip it up, and then it's destroyed. So you'd have your drip edge around the whole thing first, and then you'd use, well, this is an extra step that we do. It's not necessary, but um, it's just a little bonus step. We use the, what I was talking about, it's a deck, deck protector. It's a peel and stick flashing, pretty much. Uh, you can use, there's other ones that are specifically made for windows, there's one, this one's made for decks. It's almost exactly the same material as far as we could really tell to the ice and water. That's a little bit thinner, but we just use it to kind of seal that joint. If any water kind of comes running down, it helps bring it above the drip edge instead of letting it flow underneath it. It kind of covers that extra joint because a little bit more seal on top of the nails. So um, it's not necessarily, this isn't its intended purpose, but I, I like using it for it. It's just a little extra um, that we like to do just to make sure it stays nice and watertight and any other nails that go through they're nice and sealed up. Um, it's, it's definitely overdoing it, but like I said, if you're gonna overdo it anywhere, places where you get bunches of water, I mean, we tend to overdo a decent amount, but this thing should never leak. You could probably flip this house upside down in a pool and it wouldn't leak. Well, maybe it would, but just not the, the roof wouldn't though. So the next step from here would be if this was a larger roof, we'll probably do this one of the whole thing, but if it's a larger roof, you're gonna put what we put up there, that triflex, and roll it out on uh, top of the three inch overlap and do that everywhere else, all right? So that's, um, this ice and water is just at the bottom. And then on top of that, that's exactly where you're gonna put um, your underlayment, the synthetic underlayment that we, we would use. And we put that down with the cap staples, which seem to be the best. That is the quick start peel and stick roll uh, for, it's kind of a replacement of starter shingles. Some people will either use half of a regular shingle or you can even just buy starter shingles and lay those down. It, it's not like it's the wrong way of doing it. I like this because it's a much easier install. Plus it sticks on way better. You don't have to throw any nails in it. Uh, and you don't have any seams every three feet like you would with a normal shingle. So since you can get 33 foot runs, you can almost have absolutely no seams in your starters all the way across. So less seams, always the better. So kind of in the same way that you do the ice and water since it has that plastic on the back, you can roll it out into sections. Make sure you have the right size piece. Uh, cut that, and then as soon as it's in place, you can peel back the plastic. Now, with a star shingle, or shingles in general, um, past the ice and water, you're gonna want between one quarter inch and three quarters overhang, all right? We do between a quarter and a half inch usually. On the starter, we like to put that right just past the edge of the ice and water because it's a, it's a little bit thinner than, thinner than a standard shingle and it also has this uh, kind of sticky part on there and it would just kind of roll down the face anyway. So we stick it right at the edge of the drip edge and then we run our shingles about a quarter inch to a half inch past that. That gives it enough to any water running down gets it to kind of shoot in the gutter and doesn't let it roll down the face of the drip edge, at least not, not too much. So I'm getting my edge to be perfectly aligned and then just kind of slowly peeling back the plastic at the same time. So what's nice here is you got one guy peeling it back and the next person kind of setting it in place so they don't uh, kind of go off course. So that's usually the best way of doing the, uh, the starter. And on top of that is where we put our shingles and all that. So that's the way we do things and those are the materials that we use. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button and that bell for notifications, you know the deal. And once again, my name's Cameron. This is Remodeling America.